Welcome once again, my friends, and thank you for stopping by to listen to an old storyteller. Today we have a story from Brazil, and the title of this story is How the Monkey Became a Trickster. Once upon a time there was a beautiful garden in which grew all sorts of fruits. Many beasts lived in the garden, and they were permitted to eat of the fruits whenever they wished. But they were asked to observe one rule. They must make a low, polite bow to the fruit tree, call it by its name, and say, Please give me a taste of your fruit. They had to be very careful to remember the tree's correct name, and not to forget to say please. It was also very important that they should remember not to be greedy. They must always leave plenty of fruit for the other beasts who might pass that way, and plenty to adorn the tree itself, and to furnish seed so that other trees might grow. If they wished to eat figs, they had to say, Oh, fig tree, fig tree, please give me a taste of your fruit. Or, if they wished to eat oranges, they had to say, O oh, orange tree, O oh, orange tree, please give me a taste of your fruit. In one corner of the garden grew the most splendid tree of all. It was tall and beautiful, and the rosy-cheeked fruit upon its wide-spreading branches looked wonderfully tempting. No beast had ever tasted of that fruit, for no beast could ever remember its name. In a tiny house near the edge of the garden dwelt a little old woman who knew the names of all the fruit trees which grew in the garden. The beasts often went to her and asked the name of the wonderful fruit tree, but the tree was so far distant from the tiny house of the little old woman that no beast could ever remember the long, hard name by the time he reached the fruit tree. At last the monkey thought of a trick. Perhaps you do not know it, but the monkey can play the guitar. He always played when the beasts gathered together in the garden to dance. The monkey went to the tiny house of the little old woman, carrying his guitar under his arm. When she told him the long, hard name of the wonderful fruit tree, he made up a little tune to it, all his own, and sang it over and over again, all the way from the tiny house of the little old woman to the corner of the garden where the wonderful fruit tree grew. When any of the other beasts met him and asked him what new song he was singing to his guitar, he never said a word. He marched straight on, playing his little tune over and over again on his guitar and singing softly the long, hard name. At last he reached the corner of the garden where the wonderful fruit tree grew. He had never seen it look so beautiful. The rosy-cheeked fruit glowed in the bright sunlight. The monkey could hardly wait to make his bow, say the long, hard name over twice, and ask for the fruit with a please. What a beautiful color, and what a delicious odor that fruit had. The monkey had never in all his life been so near to anything which smelled so good. The goat assured the tiger that he was no coward. He thrust out his chest and marched along toward the marsh like a brave soldier. As soon, however, as he stepped into the marsh, he fell into the mud and barely got through it alive. The tiger went around the marsh and walked on dry ground. After the tiger and the goat had come together again, they came to some banana tree. The tiger said to the goat, Friend goat, aren't you hungry? Let us stop here and eat some bananas. You climb up and pluck the bananas. Give me the ripe ones, and keep the green ones yourself. The goat climbed up and picked the bananas. He gave the ripe ones to the tiger, and the tiger had a good meal. The goat went hungry. The tiger and the goat walked along, and after going for some distance, they saw a cobra lying in the path. Friend goat, said the tiger, here you have the opportunity to procure a beautiful necklace for your daughter, free of cost. Just pick it up, and it is yours. The goat started forward to pick up the snake, but the tiger told him to let it alone if he did not want to be killed. When the tiger and the goat arrived at the house of the tiger's friend, it was very late. They soon went to bed and hammocks hung close together. At midnight, the tiger rose quietly, walked on tiptoe to the door, opened it, and went out. He hurried to the place where the sheep were kept, 
killed the fattest lamb of the flock, and had a feast. Then he went back to the hammock, wiped the blood on the goat, and went to sleep. Early the next morning, the host discovered that one of his lambs was missing. He hastened to the room where the tiger and the goat were sleeping and accused the tiger of having killed the lamb. The tiger looked up at him with an innocent expression and asked, Do you see any blood on me? There was no blood on the tiger, but the host looked into the next hammock and saw the goat all covered with blood. I know now who killed my fattest lamb, he said, and he gave the goat such a beating that the poor goat barely escaped with his life. From that day to this, when one speaks of a person who has been easily imposed upon, he calls himself the goat. Things happened very differently with the monkey. One day, not long afterward, the tiger invited the monkey to accompany him when he went to visit his friend. The monkey accepted, and the tiger and the monkey set out on the journey. When they came to the marsh, the tiger said to the monkey, Friend monkey, how very pale you look when you think about crossing that marsh. Don't be afraid, just go ahead. Go ahead yourself, replied the monkey. The tiger went through the marsh and fell into the mud so that he was barely able to get out again. The monkey went around the marsh and walked on dry ground. After a while, the tiger and the monkey came to the banana trees. Friend monkey, said the tiger, aren't you hungry? Let us stop here and eat some bananas. You climb up and pluck the bananas. Give the ripe ones to me, and you may keep the green ones for yourself. The monkey climbed up and picked the bananas, but he ate all the ripe ones himself and threw the green ones down to the tiger. The tiger was forced to go hungry, but the monkey had a good meal. Finally, the tiger and the monkey came to a cobra lying in the path. Friend monkey, said the tiger, here you have the opportunity to procure a beautiful necklace for your daughter, free of cost. Pick it up, and it is yours. Pick it up yourself, replied the monkey. When the tiger and the monkey arrived at the house of the tiger's friend, it was very late. They went to bed in hammocks hung up close together. The monkey had seen enough of the tiger that day to make him decide that he had better sleep with one eye open. Accordingly, he pretended he was asleep, but he was really awake. At midnight, he saw the tiger crawl quietly out of his hammock and walk on tiptoe to the door, open it gently, and go out. The monkey decided to watch and see what happened when the tiger came back. The tiger went to the place where the sheep were kept killed the fattest lamb of the flock, and had a feast. When he came back, he tried to wipe the lamb's blood on the monkey. The monkey saw him and gave him a push so that he spilled the blood all over himself and his own hammock. Not a single drop went on the monkey. Early the next morning, when the host missed one of his lambs, he came to the room where his guests were sleeping. He saw the tiger all covered with blood, and he cried, Oh, ho! I have at last caught the one who kills my lambs. Then he gave the tiger such a beating that he barely escaped with his life. It was all he could do to crawl home again. Thank you once again for listening to this story. If you enjoyed this story, please press that like button. Also, please help an old storyteller out by subscribing to my channel. The next story will be posted in a few days, so until then, May your story continue to be a good one.